Hi everybody, my name is Christina and I go to St. Mary's Church and I'm also an early childhood educator which means I work with young children ages 3 to 5 and like all of you I have been stuck at home and I've been missing my friends a lot and recently Reverend Nancy reached out to me and asked if I would, wouldn't mind doing some little Sunday school videos for the children of St. Mary's Parish and any other parishes that that are watching and are doing anything, all the virtual things that have been happening. Um, for the past several weeks, St. Mary's, along with three other churches, have been doing virtual church services. And I attended my first one today as a reader, and that was really, really nice. And so when she approached me and asked me if I wouldn't mind doing some Sunday school lessons based on the gospel of that day, I was I was a bit nervous, but I thought, no, I can do this, we can do this, we can have a lot of fun with this. So it's going to be a bit different than regular Sunday school because we all can't be together and, and we can't do the same crafts together and have the same fun, but we can still listen to the same stories and learn all about God's love for us. So to get started, every Sunday, lots of Sundays, they have different meanings to them. Each Sunday sometimes has a different meaning to it. So this Sunday, May 3rd, the meaning of this Sunday, the name of it, is the Good Shepherd Sunday. So before we get into that, we're going to talk a little bit about friends. So I, for one, have a lot of friends, both big and small, and I'm missing them a lot. And my friends teach me a lot of wonderful things. And Jesus also had a lot of friends. And I bet you guys have a lot of friends too. Well, Jesus, his friends, and I could probably say they were his best friends, and I'm sure a lot of you are thinking about your best friends right now and missing them and wishing you could be with them right now. Well, Jesus' best friends were also called his disciples. And Jesus was full of God's love. He, and he wanted to share God's love with everybody. But first, he had to share God's love with his disciples, with his friends. Because he knew that one day his disciples were going to have to share that love with others. So in order to teach them, instead of sitting down and, and saying, write this down and do it this way and that way, he decided the way he was going to teach them was to tell them stories. And we call Jesus' stories parables. Because... A disciple, Jesus' friend, would ask him a question, and instead of giving them the answer, Jesus would often tell a story to let them make them think about the answer and why it's so important and why we have God's love and why God's love is so awesome. So when Jesus was teaching one day, some people in the town, they were called Pharisees, so they were kind of the leaders, if you will. And they didn't really like Jesus' teachings because he was different and he was new and, and he had a lot of people that were following him and the Pharisees wanted all the attention to themselves. So he was talking one day to the Pharisees and, and, and the Pharisees were asking him about heaven. And Jesus said, well, in order to get into heaven, you need to be like sheep. Well, everyone was very confused. Be like sheep? Why would we want to be like sheep? Sheep are just a silly animal. And Jesus said, well, sheep are very important because sheep follow a shepherd. And Jesus will often, you'll often hear him being referenced as the good shepherd. Now, a shepherd is, is very, very important. They work long hours away from their loved ones, their family, their friends, and they take care of one kind of animal, sheep. But the sheep listen to them. The sheep stay together and they don't wander off. And if a sheep does wander off, the shepherd will find the sheep. And the shepherd also protects the sheep from the enemies. From anything that could try to hurt the sheep, the shepherd is there to protect them. So when Jesus said that people need to be like sheep in order to enter the kingdom in heaven, they didn't understand what it meant. So Jesus further explained that in order to enter in the kingdom of heaven, that you need to be like the sheep, you need to follow Jesus. Jesus further went on to say that he is the gate. So he is like the door. And whoever loves him and whoever follows him is welcomed into his gate. And so it's a good reminder of why Jesus is the good shepherd. 
Because no matter what we do, he's always there to help us. He's always there to welcome us back into the gate. That we could hurt someone, but he's going to forgive us. That we might do something that he's not proud of, but if we say sorry, he's there with his arms open. And he never, ever turns away one of his sheep. And he's always there to help us and protect us and support us. Sometimes it can be hard to feel his love and, and protection, but it's always there. And I know for me, being at home all the time has, you know, it has been hard. I've been missing my friends. I've been missing my family. But I also know that the one thing I'm not missing is God's love. And I always have God's love wrapped around me. And I know that with his love, that whatever happens, he's going to be with me. And I know that whatever happens, he's going to be with you and your families. And he's always going to protect you. And he's always going to love you. And all that he wants in return is for you and for me to love him. And to do that, we can be kind to one another. We can help out our neighbor. We can say something nice. We can unload the dishwasher or make our bed without our moms and dads even asking us. And just do nice things to show God's love. And that's what Jesus was trying to teach that day, that he is the gate. He is the good shepherd. And through him, we are the sheep. And through him, we can go, go anywhere. All we have to do is follow him. Just like the sheep follows the shepherd. And the shepherd always takes care of them. So I was looking through some books. And I found a nice picture that kind of shows how Jesus is a shepherd. And I want to share it with you. And it also has the passage of the Lord is my shepherd. So while I'm showing it to you, I'm also going to read that little passage so you can hear how Jesus does help us and how he does protect us. So here's the picture. So as you can see, Jesus is holding the sheep and he's holding the children and he's making sure that they're all protected. And it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me to the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For he is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, some of those words and some of those sentences can be a little bit confusing, but as I just said before, as long as we follow Jesus and we, and we do what he asks us, he is always going to be there. He is always going to be our good shepherd, and he's always going to want to lead us and protect us to make sure no harm comes to us and all he wants is our love in return and that's not a lot to ask so i think that's a pretty easy thing for all of us to do so one of the things that people do you guys do in sunday school is is you make crafts or you do fun activities to kind of help you well unfortunately it's kind of hard to do a craft when you're looking when you're watching on the computer or on the tablet so instead of doing crafts, Reverend Nancy and I were talking and, and we decided that it would be a nice thing to do to be more like Jesus and to do good deeds, to do nice things for people. So I'm going to ask that everyone, whoever is watching, find something nice that you can do for someone else. It might be your neighbor, it might be your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your nan or pop, whoever it is and do something nice for them. And then maybe write about it or take a little picture and send it to, and, and send it to, and put it, post it in the comments of this video. There you go. And, and so that way people can see the good deeds that are happening all around us. So that even in this uncertain, kind of scary time that we're in, and the time that we're missing our family and friends, we can still see the love of God and the love of Jesus in what we do, and people can still feel God's love in the kind acts that we do for them. 
because that's all Jesus wants is he wants us to do kind things for one another. He wants us to help our neighbor and he wants us to love him. So I think we can all do that. I think that should be pretty easy. So I'm going to find a good deed for me to do this week as well. And I'm going to take a picture of it and post it into the comments. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of your pictures of your good deeds as well, of what you did. It might be you unloaded the dishwasher or you baked some cookies or, or, you, or you made something for your neighbor next door. It could be something very, very small, but it brings a smile to someone's face. It's a good deed and it makes you feel good. And that's all that God wants us to do is to do good things for one another, be kind to one another, love him as much as he loves us. So I hope everyone has a wonderful week. Before we go, let's say a little prayer. And when I used to teach Sunday school years ago, we used to do we used to teach the children how to, how to have a little prayer. So the first thing we would do is we would say we'd fold our hands. And the reason we fold our hands is so we're not touching anybody or we're not touching ourselves. We're not playing with our hair, or fiddling with our clothes. So we're going to fold our hands. Then the next thing that we do is we bow our heads. When you bow your heads, you're showing respect to God. You're giving God the respect that, you know, he does deserve. And then we close our eyes. And closing our eyes is to help us focus on the prayer being said, and not looking around to see what everyone else is doing. So I want everyone to fold their hands, bow your heads, and close your eyes. Dear God, thank you that we have technology, that we can have virtual services and virtual Sunday school even during these uncertain times. Please be with everyone as they go about their new daily activities, as they find ways to find joy in everything that they do and be with them in the good deeds that they accomplish this week. Please bless everyone that you will keep everyone safe and that everyone will find wonderful things to do and always remember that your love surrounds them. I pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. And amen means I agree. So when you say amen, you're agreeing to the prayer and you know that it's true. So I hope everyone has a wonderful week and I look forward to doing more videos for you. Bye.